Even when the Canucks uh, are out of town for Game 3, the Stanley Cup buzz in B.C. and across this land is at an all-time high. That and other things put a little pressure on hockey stars. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Saul Miller, one of North America's leading performance specialists, to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hi, Fanny. Nice to see you again. Of course, you've written the book, uh, not only about why teams win, but also about uh, hockey tough and the psychology of winning hockey. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, who has the right stuff for winning hockey? What does it take? Well, I mean, it's such a physical, intense, high-speed game. I mean, it's about skill, it's about focus, it's about mental toughness, it's about, you know, a lot of these key qualities. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, it looks like the Canucks have it. It does, mm -hmm. Let's, God willing. Well, Brian Burke said, Hockey's a men's game, a real men's game, and if real men play it, we'll win, well, I or think he'll win, or somebody will win. I think I think it is, uh, you know, it is a, a man's mm. game. I mean, it's exciting to watch women play. I think they should have a little more physical contact in the women's game. You do? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, no body checking in the women's game. It's not quite hockey. Oh, and we know how to hit. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. I do. Uh, so I. Uh, when you work with an aggressive player or a not so aggressive player, how do you change what you tell them? Say you're with, uh, uh, you know, a, a Sedin, for instance, one of the Sedins, and they brought their game. A and they're not like hitting everybody and checking and, well, they are, but they're not aggressive, terribly aggressive in the way we think of fighting and well, that kind of thing. You know, or there's are a, they? No, no, there's no. a lot of very good players. If you think of Joe Sackick and Stevie mm -hmm. Iserman, I mean, these were great players in the game uh, who were not scrappers, who were not fighters. Mm -hmm. I mean, their aggressiveness was focused in being quick to the puck, moving the puck, and making things happen in that regard. And part of mental toughness is not getting distracted, not getting off your game. I mean, there's a lot of chatter out there on the ice, you know? I mean especially if you go down and you work with junior hockey and, and you know, midget hockey. There's right. a tremendous amount of chatter. There are a lot of testosterone out there and there are a lot of people talking at each other, trying to get people off their game. Mm -hmm. I always tell the kids I work with, I say, if I walk through my neighborhood and my neighbor's dog barks, I don't usually bark back. But on the ice, boy, there's a lot of barking. Well, sure. you know, players like the Sedins, who are very intelligent hockey players, mm -hmm. their focus is entirely quick to the puck, move the puck, create an opportunity, create space, make yourself available. And their intelligence on the ice raises the intelligence of the players around them. There's no question about that. It was the same when you played with Gretzky. Mm. You know, he saw things and created opportunities that raised your level of awareness that made you a more... Uh, sure. You see coaches all the time uh, telling their teams, see the game. Yeah. Just uh, settle down. See the game. Or see the puck. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. So Malhotra, uh, the, the resilient Malhotra, who's had a bit, a bit of a miracle eye recovery, he's not all there yet, I don't think, but he's very close. He, he hits the ice... Uh, does that change how the players feel? Is it a big, when, when one of your team comes back, psychologically it's, it's a big hit, or are they so focused on what they have to do? These guys are very professional, and I mean, yeah. I, I think, you know, success in the game is about focus, it's about emotional control, it's about mental preparation. Sure, chemistry is another factor. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a bond, there's a family, there's a team feeling. And when one of the players is injured and one of the players comes back, there's a good feeling about it, but it's peripheral. The main thing is our focus, our intensity, and our ability mm. to execute under pressure. And I think, you know, in Why Teams Win, I talked about nine keys to success. Right, operating Why, your mental TV. Is that, the, is that one of them? Well, that's a big one in performing under pressure. We know okay. what our job is, but are we able to stay on the power channel? Mm. But I was saying, you know, there's talent, there's leadership, there's chemistry. The Canucks have all of that. There's commitment, and they have that stuff going right now. And I think, you know, Boston is obviously a good team, but I don't think they have the same depth that the Canucks have, and I think they're trying to keep up. And the difference is, when you say they don't have the same depth, uh, certainly they have a goaltender that seems to be quite an athlete. We yeah. need to him, him to have just a tiny injury. 
Well, I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't think he was stellar in the last game, frankly. Okay. It's very interesting if you contrast the two goalies. I mean, they're mm -hmm. both supposedly, you know, the best in the league. And what is the difference is that Luongo is really um, technically very sound. One of the things they worked with, I talked to the goalie coach, one of the things they've worked with is to try and keep him back closer to the net, in the paint, in right. the blue. Mm -hmm. um, he's a big guy, he has good technique, he's moving back and forth, he's got good focus, very difficult to get a puck by him. In contrast, Thomas is, is really very unorthodox, fun yeah. to watch, he's flopping all over the place. And it, skating way out. And skating way out, which cost him, I think, some of the last goal in mm -hmm. the game. So his, he, if you're having pressure, one of the things always to go back to is basic technique. And so he might be more of a hot and cold kind of goalie because mm -hmm. he's either where he should be or he's not where he should be, whereas Roberto tends to be in the right place most of the time. Sure, and obviously the uh, uh, coach said to Roberto a few games back, quite a few games back, stay in your net. Well, that's probably You're really good in the net. Stay there. <laughs> that's probably a real good idea. Yeah, real good idea. Uh, the mental tips you uh, offer a player who's just not on his game. Right. Uh, lost it for whatever reason, and we do that in life. And nobody know not injured, having an okay time at home, right. no pressures. Just you lose it on the golf course. You lose it on the ice. Well, I think. Um, you know, it's something that you work with over a period of time. It's not just something you say right before the game. I think you're working with players all season long. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're really working them with them to understand, why am I a good player? A player should understand, I'm effective for these reasons. I'm fast, I work hard, I'm physical, I see the ice well. They should have three or four reasons that they understand why they're good. It doesn't change if it's, if it's Monday or if it's Wednesday. It doesn't change if they're at home or on the road, I'm a good player. Then they should understand when they're playing well, what they do. They should have you know half a dozen things that they can visualize. Mm. When I play my best, I'm doing this, 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 and this. It's part of their preparation. And um, you know, I believe that mental preparation is really important. Sure. So before a game, you relax, you see yourself doing the things that you do well, you talk positively to yourself, and boom, you're ready to go. Just as you warm up your body, you warm up your mind to be the best you can be. And if you uh, uh, make a major faux pas on the ice, it and happens. you know it, and it happens, of course it does. You make a mistake and the coach is thinking, why was he there? Right. What was he, or why wasn't he there, more importantly? Uh, how do you uh, work with a player to get over it immediately? Well, Not if, take it even to the bench? Well, I mean, usually when you take it to the bench, uh, you know, when you're playing the game, you're playing the game. But, you know, the right. shifts are very short. We're talking 45 seconds or something sure. like that. You come off the ice. If you've done something well, I think you should be saying to yourself, that's me. You know, if it's poor, if you made a bad pass, mm -hmm. you coughed up the puck, that's not me. And see yourself make that pass. <laughs> Turn the negative right. into a positive. Always. Yeah, so why absolutely. we get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, I'm gorgeous. I think you should. No matter. <laughs> no, what do you mean no matter? What's reflected. <laughs> no, but it's, it's true because the, our, the, brain is a, the, the brain is a powerful thing. Absolutely. Right. So working through, uh, you know, you've got a Charlie horse or whatever they're called now uh, on the ice and you yeah. limp back to the bench. Uh, are there thoughts for that, uh, physical thoughts to help your body physically without going back to the locker room? Do you know what I mean? Like I work you, a lot you've with been breathing. Hit hard. Yeah, I work a lot with breathing, Fanny. I mean, it, you know, everybody talks about right. staying in the moment. It's one game at a time, one shift at a time. And one of the ways to stay in the moment is always come back to the breath. And if you work with breath and you work with positive focus, you sure. know, a player should know that a good shift for most of these players is move my feet, win the puck, move the puck. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've been shaken up, you come back to the bench, you catch your breath, and then it's back to sure. move my feet, win the puck, move the puck. It gives you that focus because the game is so physically intense, so emotionally in Right. intense it's in your face that you've got to have emotional control you've got to have positive focus and you have to have mm -hmm. energy so it's about taking a breath and that's what we talk about in performing under pressure okay so Burroughs whether or not he bit a finger or not he did he 
He, well, somebody put a glove in your mouth. <laughs> Absolutely. You might chomp down too. Absolutely. Some years ago, I was working with Medicine Hat, and we were playing the Vancouver Giants in the, in the Memorial Cup, and one of our players was suspended because he bit one of their players. And he said exactly that. He was face washing me. He stuck his finger in my mouth. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. They suspended our guy. Well, they didn't suspend Burroughs, but he did get even. How did he get even? Well, he scored. He got... He, I, I think his dad had a little chat with him or something and said, like, let's forget all of that, just, you know... Well, he got doubly even. He bit he the got, guy in the finger and he scored and two he goals. Scored. Exactly. Exactly. And, and Boston, I thought, a good reaction from them. Let's not get lost in the details, mm -hmm. right? Let's not focus on the negative. Uh, if uh, they made a decision, that's the decision. Exactly, Let's move ahead. Right. A uh, good way to go? Absolutely. You know, you got to have short memory. You got to focus on the things that make a difference. Mm -hmm. But you know what, what we, we watch the end result. I mean, this is the culmination of years of training and practice and everything else coming down to this final series. Right. And somebody said it takes a lot of unspectacular practice to mm. create outstanding results. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a team that's very well prepared. And I think, I think the Canucks should be very confident. Good. You know, because I'm glad com you think confidence that. comes from success mm -hmm. and it comes from preparation. And I think they're well prepared and they've had a lot of success. They're also expected to win. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to before, in 94, mm -hmm. we, we were more the long shot. For sure. Now we are the shot. Yep, absolutely. Extra pressure. Or it's, is it? Well, it's extra pressure, but, I mean, it's there for a reason. It's a very good team. It's talented. There's very good leadership. As I said, the chemistry's good. There's commitment. All these things are in place mm -hmm. for this to be a good team. I mean, Boston is a good team, but they don't have the same depth. They don't have the same speed. Their goalie is good. He's not quite as good. Their defense isn't as deep. Their forwards aren't as fast. So they're good, but you'll notice right. at the end of the game, they kind of wear down. So as the coach, how do you work with your team uh, on the stats of the game? Say Boston loses uh, tonight, now 3-zip. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be highly unlikely for them to come back. So what kind of motivation would you offer the team, the Boston, the Bruins, I would say if they're to them, three down. I'd say to them, you know, it's one game at a time, boys. We're going out to play. It's no, we're not talking about winning four in a row. We're talking about winning this game tonight. And winning this game is about winning this period. It's about winning our shifts. And you know you're good players. It's back to your ABCs, mm -hmm. back to the basic things you do. It's, you know, demanding that they're aggressive to focus on right. the positive. So you always focus on the positive, no matter what. Absolutely. Uh, do you think it inspires a player to play for a friend who's died or a hockey player who's died or a new baby? Uh, or does that actually take them off their game a bit? Well, I think, you know, again, it goes back to p performing under pressure. Good people, I, I believe if, if your commitment is to be the best, then whatever comes up, you've got to use it. Okay. So if you get the input, if there's something more that can stimulate you to play well, you know, sure. you take a breath, you draw that energy to you, mm -hmm. and you just focus. So that's the winning hockey attitude. Absolutely. Like this guy has. It's a... Uh, Pursuit of the Holy Grail. Pursuit. <laughs> looks like a sedine to me. It looks... With a bit know, of a Jesus hairdo. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because I did this painting several years ago when uh, the Canucks were still pursuing the Holy Grail. Right. And I was friendly with Matthias Oland, and I took the painting over to show it to Matthias. And when I came in, his wife Linda said, that's Daniel Sedin. <laughs> well, oh, it's not the other one, eh? It, well, it could it's have been Henrik. Henrik. I can't tell him apart. <laughs> it could have been Henrik. No, I can't either. How nice to see you. It's always a pleasure. Go Henry. Canucks, go. Okay. Okay, the complete player, one of his books, Hockey Tough, Performing Under Pressure, and Why Teams Win. Dr. Saul Miller.